so a very good evening everybody so we'll be starting with the business session so uh, it's only one update in the business session from my and as a vp so these are the role takers which have been booked for the next week so we have three speakers toastmaster zuleka toastmaster lakshmi and toastmaster mukesh and all the other roles are open so anybody interested can contact me uh, so sajin before i start off i'd like to request everyone in this room to put your mobile phones on silent or switch off so that we do not disturb the speakers all right a very good evening to my fellow toastmasters and dear guests losing is learning uh, you might have heard people saying that i either win or i learn there is no losing because losing in essence can turn out to be a learning experience more than anything else uh losing can teach you humility it teaches you that you are human it is okay and that things can go wrong at times and there can be people who are better than you who can do better than you are more skilled talented as compared to you but i strongly believe that you don't have to lose every time in order to learn you can also learn from other people losing from their loss for example few years back a leopard had entered into somebody's house and a policeman went and stuck his hand into the window and few seconds later he brought his hand back and he had lost few fingers lesson learned don't offer your hand to a leopard <laughs> Every year thousands of people in India die due to road accidents especially those riding on two wheelers and why do they sacrifice their lives why do they lose their lives in order for us to learn that you have to wear a helmet when going out on a two wheeler for that 1% chance that anything might happen finally i come to this cricket team called rcb who are experts at losing back in 2011 they brought this very special batsman called Chris Gale all the way from uh, Jamaica and they said this guy will get us to the final he got them to the final and they lost the final and one lesson to be learned there i don't know if they have learned it is that one strong player is not enough you need a strong team to win the tournament and to win tournaments rcb can take inspiration from their football counterparts from the indian super league bengaluru fc and learn how to win tournaments and speaking of football reminds me of a massive football fan who he's a fan of liverpool fc and bayern munich uh, a dog lover whose dream is to travel all around india and try all the adventure sports he has taken up uh, various roles in the executive committee at mekon communication club please put together a big round of applause for our presiding officer for today postmaster gaur very good evening to all those masters and dear guests when the sergeant said this kind of you know scared me a bit because you know what happened that you know too much the defense story okay uh, so we have a uh, uh, practice where we call you know we, i request the guests to you know, stand up wherever they are seated and let us know how you came to know about those masters and what brings you here you can start Hi, uh, I'm Shramji. Uh, I'm a techie. Uh, I've uh, known about Toastmasters I think since from my college days, and uh, I've always been so eager to participate. But now I get the chance and I come to participate in Toastmasters meetings. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Sushil. I've been uh, here for uh, like four or five sessions already. I'm uh, like uh, I want to take the membership uh, today. I'm uh, passing uh, CFA now. I salute myself. Uh, welcome both the guests. I hope you become a member soon. So I like to call Toastmaster Shiva Prasad to read out the minutes of the meeting of the team. Yes. Mr. Gaurav, here are the minutes of meeting number one one eight two held on the third of October two thousand and twenty. 
theme was power of visualization word of the week optimal the business session started at 6:36 pm and was chaired by president toshmasta lalnamu in the business session the following points were addressed the president mentioned that the e certificates being issued to the winners of every meeting would be discontinued and fully replaced by ribbons she also commended dtm ak prabhakara for procuring the new ribbons the vice president education toastmaster gaurav mentioned that all other roles were open for the next meeting apart from the three speech slots and master of ceremonies interested members were requested to contact him for the same the regular meeting started at 6:38 pm acting sanjay dams toastmaster shiva prasad started the meeting with an introduction about the theme and later handed over the charge to president toastmaster lalnamo the president opened the meeting spoke on the theme and introduced the master of ceremonies toastmaster jyotira The master of ceremonies spoke on the theme and introduced the following role takers for the day. Timer Toastmaster Sai Snail Reddy, Arc Counter Toastmaster Vijay Upendra, Grammarian Toastmaster Ajay, and TP Evaluator DTM Mio Bhatt. The prepared speech session had the following speeches. Uh, first one, Toastmaster Ujwal Suresh, attempting level one, project one, and was evaluated by Toastmaster Zuleka Begum. Second one by Toastmaster Gaurav attempting level three elective project and was evaluated by DTM AK Prabhakar. The table topic session was conducted by DTM Udanka and had the following speakers and had seven speakers in total. The general evaluation was conducted by Toastmaster Vaishnavi. The winners of the week were best prepared speaker Toastmaster Ujwal S Kumar, best evaluator DTM AK Prabhakar, best table topic speaker Toastmaster Ajay, best role taker Tap G. Toastmaster Ajay and best role taker MTG DTM Pradhan. The president closed the meeting at 8:18 p.m., which was followed by the national anthem. Thank you, and back to you. Uh, is there any amendments in the previous meeting? If not, then I consider it as passed. And open meeting number 118. Back in my school days. I was very much into cricket. Like each and every cricket match I used to watch, even if it's not Indian cricket match. So uh, I was so much into cricket. I practiced cricket for six to seven years when I was in school. So in the year 2014, when I was in eighth standard, basically, the coaching with where I used to go, they organized a tour to Malaysia. So it was a tour of nine days, where five days you're gonna play a match against them. And four days are gone before roaming around and sightseeing, basically. So I, they gave us a form where it said what how much should be paid and what is the package and everything. So I I had fixed my mind. My parents are not going to send me over. Like, I'm just a eighth standard kid. I'm just 14 years old. So I just went to went back home. I just kept that form on the table. My dad saw. He's like, Would you like to go? I'm like, Are you trying to fool me? Is this a joke? Come in. Till now, not even been out of Karnataka without you both, and you were ready to send me out of India. He's like, why not go for it? It'll be a very nice experience, a lifetime opportunity. I'm like, okay, when parents are okay with it, who am I to say no? So the payment was done, and after that, they gave us new new kits, the the pad, everything, and they gave us a new jersey. The jersey was like the Indian cricket jersey, the exact same jersey, but except India had written the coaching name, and behind it was written in bold letters, "Gaurav Jersey Number no. Four." It felt like dream come true. It seriously felt like I'm gonna play for the national team. So we landed in Malaysia. The second day was our first match. It's a 20 overs, of, it's a 20 overs match, and we are first batting. So I'm basically an all-rounder. So me being all rounder, I go to bat once five or six wickets are down. So I was fully prepared as to I go. I mean, usually I get only four to five overs to bat. I'm gonna hit four sixes on like on Virat Kohli or some Ardik Pandya, and I'm gonna hit, you know show off saying I score so much and and uh, yeah, six wickets were down. I go to the crease. I take my stance. I was full confident to face the ball. The bowler bowls an instant ball. The ball was so fast. I instead of touching my back, hit my thigh, and unfortunately, I forgot to wear my thigh pads. But at that moment, I didn't feel any pain because I was in full excitement. I'm out of India, playing for I'm full like international level cricketer. I was in full confidence. 
we scored around 156 runs, the target was 157 for 20 overs. Unfortunately, we lost very badly. Second innings, we just took two wickets and the opponents achieved the target in just 15 overs. And we were full disappointment. We didn't know what went wrong. We didn't know where, what exactly happened. We were not able to digest that we lost. So this next day was our second match. Then I had, you know, imagine myself as a Virat Kohli scoring 50, removing my helmet, throwing my bat, everything. Then all of a sudden I started feeling pain in my left thigh because that ball had uh, hit my leg. So I was unable to walk properly. So I went to my coach and he said, you sit down, it's okay, this match you don't play. I was, I mean, I was so disappointed, so irritated, saying that, you know, I just spent so much cash, flew all the way from India, not getting a chance to play. And then the second match, even my team lost that match as well. We were full disappointed. Okay. Then our coach said, it's okay. It's a five match series. Even if you win the next three matches, you're gonna, you guys are going to get this trophy. So we had decided, okay, we're going to give our best in these three matches. In the third match, my coach told you are going to bat in you know, two down. Like when two wickets are down, you're going to go there and bat. So it's a little bit early for me. So I had fixed my mind, I'm going to get 15 overs to bat. Today I'm going to get six and fours, I'm going to score a half century. So I go to bat, and it was a very fast bowler, it bowls. So I, I thought that I'm going to defend the ball. So when you're going to play any shot, the leg comes first, then comes the bat. But I think I was a little bit scared to keep my leg front because of the first match. So I just kept my bat, there was a huge gap. The ball came and hit my wicket. The very first ball. And everyone in the field started, you know, celebrating, saying, yeah, hey, I was a... And for a second, I didn't know what exactly is happening. I was upstruck. I just saw I was bold on the very first ball. I just go back to the pavilion, I go to the uh, dressing room. I saw nobody was there. I just threw my back in anger. I was disheartened. I didn't know what was to be done. I performed very badly in this match. And we lost this third match as well. And everybody in the team started fighting, saying, because of you, we lost this match. Because of you, you didn't go properly, you didn't back properly. Then our coach comes and he says, it's okay that you guys lost this series, it's okay. But still there are two more matches, you can prove yourself that you can win these two matches. All this while you guys, you know, had a mindset that you want to score so much, you want to take so many wickets. Once play as a team, once play as, you know, have the teamwork. Play for your team and score for your team instead of scoring individually. Then you see you are going to win this match. And we all decided, okay, we have came up with a strategy, what is to be done if this is not working out, what is plan B, this is not their plan C. And we won the next two matches. Of course, we won, we lost this series, but there was a lot of learnings. First thing, we learned how important it is to be a team. Without team, you individually cannot win any sport. For me personally, it was a very good learning that me being a guy who never went out anywhere without my parents, I went out out of country and that was like a lifetime experience. I gained so much confidence, I met so many people. So with this, let me call out the special person for tonight. Uh, she is a law student. Uh, she's a, I mean, she finds happiness in dancing and she's a very good mountain climber as well. So with a huge round of applause, please help me welcome the master of ceremonies of today, Post Master Vaishnav. Sometimes you win. And sometimes you learn. And the rest of the time, you just have fun. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and your guests. I would like to start by narrating a recent highlight from my life describing the quote I just mentioned. Modern United Nations, or like we call MUN. These are like a replica for the actual United Nations conferences. But these are held for school and college students. I have done only one MUN till now, which was pretty much just two weeks back. But every time, 
for the rest of my life before those two weeks, I heard about these conferences from either my fellow batchmates or my seniors. It always felt like, you know how people explain the first time they had their experience in business class? That's how these conferences were told to us. And I was pretty excited. So I decided to go for my first MUN held in VIT Chennai. VIT Chennai is like one of the prestigious MUNs ever held. And me being an amateur wanted to go to the pro league already. So I decided to have one month of intense research continuous research and you know advisors from seniors I had asked every other manners in the college their advice how to win a month as a first time so I was all packed up to go to Chennai a pride delegate of Armenia I walked through the doors of the conference hall to lobby every other country sitting in that room just like me, there were 80 other delegates sitting there. All of them done with a thorough research. But when I reached there, first session, which was a two hour session, immediately after that, I knew I was slaying it because I had given three speeches about, among all the 80 delegates, which was the highest speech record for that session, for, for any other delegate. So I knew there was a chance for me to win. But somehow during the process, in the two days conference, I just focused only on speeches because I knew that is something I could do. But I forgot that these conferences are meant to convince and form peace working papers, which was the main goal. And all I did was giving speeches and failed lobbying other delegates. It hurt more because I knew I was winning and I was at my peaks. And the last day of conference arrived, where it was time to vote. I forgot to submit my working paper in during the process of giving speeches, which was the main element. And being a first timer, I did not know that. And if I would have spent time not focusing on the speeches, and focusing more on learning from others, maybe I would have known this. But unfortunately, everyone voted against me. It was a miserable fail. Just three votes against 78 votes. I was rejected badly over there. With disheartened, I came back and sat. I knew I took a lot of things back. A lot to learn, though I lost. The, this conference taught me what to learn from other delegates. How the delegates of Middle Eastern countries dominated the rest of the world. They convinced the whole committee to ban LGBT, com uh, ban LGBT community from the countries which have been pro for the agenda. And this coming from Afghanistan and UAE. It was, and no one could raise voices against them. It was that bad. And USA was just sitting and working on its abortion laws and everyone pointing out. It was so bad that delegates of Jamaica, who was a blind delegate, who had been actively listening to all my speeches and still gave the best speech. It was not because it was, it was not because that he was well prepared. It was because I was overconfident. And he learned from my mistakes and did the right things for his speech. When you win, you learn just from what you did right. But when you lose, you learn a lot about what you did wrong. And he learned all the right things. Rad C's Medley very well knew this and thought, why not start a platform to implement this? So, in the year 1924, at YMCA in San California, a stage called Toast 
postmaster was set to correct the wrongs and relearn the rights with the help of each other. Today, Toastmaster forms home for 3 lakh learners across 149 countries. For the benefit of the guests, a typical Toastmaster meeting consists of three sessions. The prepared speech session. As the name suggests, the speaker gets time to prepare for a speech on the subject of their choice as per the guidelines of the manual. The table topic session. In this session, the table topic master will choose the speakers randomly and give a topic for which responses has to be given in an impromptu manner. And last, the evaluation session. This is the session where the speeches and the proceedings of the meeting will be evaluated and feedback will be given. Now, I would like to call upon a team of role takers who will help us analyze between the rights and wrongs. Please help me welcome the PP evaluator, Toastmaster Shiva. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. Just like the MC mentioned, she was speaking about model United Nations and how the procedure has to happen there is in a parliamentary manner. Just like that at Toastmasters, we have a parliamentary procedure evaluated uh, because there are certain rules to be followed. Uh, please enter or exit this room only during an applause and avoid speaking uh, when the speaker is speaking here so that it doesn't distract them and kindly refrain from uh, speaking about anything related to sex, religion or politics. I will be giving my report during the general evaluation back to you, Thank you, Toastmaster Shiva. Can we have the our counter Toastmaster Pavani? A very happy evening to all the fellow Toastmasters and my dear guests. Uh, as an uh, counter, uh, the purpose of an counter is to note any overdue words or filler sounds used as a crutch by anyone who speaks during the meeting. Words may be inappropriate interjections such as uh, and, well, but, so, and you know. Sounds may be ah, uh, um, etc. I will be giving my report at the general evaluation session. Thank you and back to the masters. Thank you, Toastmaster Pavani. Can we have the Grammarian Toastmaster Sharani? <laughs> A very good evening to all the fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. Toastmaster Vaishali, you are looking nice today. What if I told the same thing? Toastmaster Vaishali, you are looking absolutely ravishing. Which one do you think is better? The second one, right? What if I told Toastmaster Jyoti, you're looking great today. What if I told the same thing? Toastmaster Jyoti, you're looking absolutely radiant, which is lighting up the whole room. You're just looking like the sun. What distinguishes us Toastmasters from others? It's the grammar and the words that we inculcate in our communication. To have a sensible and understanding communication, grammar and usage of words play an integral part. As a, as a grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all the speakers and listen to them carefully. I will also make note of good usages, which are uh, outstanding words, quotes, phrases, and also make note of not so good usages for betterment of communication. It is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. The word of the day is dearth. I repeat, the word of the day is dearth, which means scarcity or lack of something. An example for this word is, there is dearth of evidence. I request everyone not to be reluctant and use the word of the day. I will be giving my report when called upon by the general evaluator. Thank you and back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sharanya. Can we have the timer, Toastmaster Lakshmi? Masters, welcome dear guests. As the wise baboon in the Lion King says, 
it is time to talk about the time. So as the time of today, I will be talking about and keeping track of the time that you all take for your speeches. So I have with me here these colorful flags, which I will show as a polite reminder that you are, you know, exceeding your time. So please look at me and look at my flags. Um, so I will be timing, uh, for example, the icebreaker speech is supposed to be from four to six minutes. So uh, at four minutes, I will hold up the green flag at five minutes, the yellow flag, and at six minutes, the red flag. The table topics, um, the speakers are supposed to be talking between <coughs> one and two minutes. So at one minute, I will hold up the green flag. At one and a half minutes, the yellow flag. And at two minutes, the red flag. The prepared speech, the speaker is not here today, right? Please. Okay. Um, then other than that, the evaluators, the evaluators, I will be timing them as well. So the evaluation is supposed to be between two and three minutes. At two minutes, I will hold up the green flag. At two and a half minutes, the uh, yellow flag. And at three minutes, the red flag. I will give my report at the end when called upon by the general evaluator. Uh, let us try and keep within the time so that there is no dearth of time for the other speakers. Thank you and back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Lakshmi. Before calling upon the first speaker, can we have the individual evaluator, Toastmaster Ujwal, to read out the project guidelines? A very happy evening to all the fellow Toastmasters, my esteemed guests, and Toastmaster Superba in particular. The purpose of this project is for the members to introduce himself or herself to the club and learn the basic structure of a public speech. Coming to the notes for the evaluator, this member is completing his or her first speech in Toastmasters. The goal of the evaluation is to give the member an effective evaluation of his or her speech and the delivery style. Because the icebreaker is the first project a member completes, so you may choose to use only the uh, note section and not the numerical section. I'll give my report at the evaluation session. All the best to the speaker. Back to UMC. Thank you, Toastmaster Ujwal. Just like the individual evaluator said, the first speaker is going to give her icebreaker speech today. And instead of me introducing her, she shall tell us about her learnings and wins. So please help me introduce Toastmaster Suprabha with her speech title, Grow Through What You Go Through. Hello, Mekonians. Listen, when Gora first asked me to do this, I was really excited. He was like, can you give your icebreaker speech this Monday? I was like, me? Yes. I would love to talk about something important or think about an idea worth sharing. He was like, yeah, just talk about yourself. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. I can do that. I love talking, especially about myself, of course. Greetings fellow Toastmasters and esteemed guests. Myself, Suprabha Bhatt, here to share the journey of my beautiful life by growing through what I go through. 20 years back was my first birthday party and more than half of the people didn't turn up. My dad was confused. He called them up and asked the reason as to why they didn't turn up. They were like, so you're serious about your third child? Like you have a third child? My dad is like, yeah, of course. Why else would there be a birthday party? And they were like, because it's fool's day. We thought you might be pranking us with your little joke, whatever. Yes, I was born on 1st of April and since then my life has been a complete joke. Like my, most, of, most people don't even take me seriously just because I was born on Fool's Day. Like that's not even my mistake. But people, whatevs. We are a huge family of five people and four pets. My dad is a civil engineer and has a hotel business. He gives the most amazing motivational speeches anytime I feel low. And he's a very practical person. Also, he's a national level chess player. But last year he was disqualified because he unintentionally took his phone inside the game hall, for which my mom is gonna taunt him for the rest of his life. As of my mom, who's very caring, sensitive, and who taught
taught me the power of prayer was managing Supraba group of resorts but had to give it up after receiving tons of complaints about me from school. So she stayed back, stayed back at home to teach me some good manners. My brother, Supraj, is a firstborn. That means responsibility comes naturally without any choice. Is also a civil engineer and an interior designer. Apart from being responsible, he also signs my marks card anytime I score low marks. <laughs> and also all the complaint sheets, he, he signs it for me. My sister, Supreta, is a therapist and a yoga practitioner. You can follow her page on uh, the dot yogi way. Actually, she told me to tell you this, so please cut this one. She is my unpaid therapist and my best friend. As of me, I am the last one. So I am the most pampered, spoon fed and spoiled child according to my parents, my siblings, basically everyone. But that is so not true. Like I am very responsible. I prepared this entire ice cream speech all by myself. And I even told my dad that I'm ready to earn for a living. But he was being very unreasonable. Like he gave a very unreasonable answer. He's like, see, but you can earn. But for that, you'll have to work. Very unreasonable. Growing up, I was a complete extrovert. I still am. I can talk to any person of any age, any time, regardless of my mood. So picking up a conversation is really not that difficult, but shutting my mouth definitely is. Um, I am a very expressive person because people are not really mind readers. You have to open your mouth in order to let them know. I come from a very small town called Kadasa. So you guys know where Modigir is. You are already telling me okay. Uh, so I come from a place beyond that. So there is a quote by Rumi where he, tells, where he tells, there's a place beyond right and wrong, meet me there. I am still waiting for Rumi. He has not arrived yet. I am pretty sure he's stuck in Bangalore traffic. So growing up as a child, I was least bothered about my studies. I, even though I was pretty good at it, I was more focused on sports, dance, and extracurriculars because my focus has always been fixated and will always be fixated on building skills which actually help in life and not scoring just merely marks. I am a state level badminton and chess player. I have completed my senior exam in Bharatanatyam and have mastered over 10 forms of dance. I have black belt in karate and blue belt in taekwondo. I go for wedding choreographies, meaning I teach dance to people. I make decent. See, I am very responsible. I don't know why my dad did that. Uh, with, with that, uh, I have also started animal shelter during COVID and I was able to rescue over 19 abused and abandoned animals so far and it's the love for animals that made me turn into a vegan so no species of here how i like dog i like pigs also like that i have a huge reading addiction i am addicted to books i choose books over movies or series and it's been five years five years that i've been consistently doing yoga meditation and journaling because i am a very hyperactive person so i need something to calm myself down as of now i am pursuing this course called Aviation management, it's a very interesting course actually that teach you lots of interesting things like how is an airport built or how you can earn loads of money if you work for an airline or how is an aircraft built. But the only thing they forgot to teach you is how to build a career out of this. <laughs> Just skip it over. I am kidding guys, it teaches anything. But the one thing I remain grateful is one of our teachers who takes air cargo management mentioned about Toastmasters. It struck me, I immediately googled it up and I was quite intrigued by it. So I am not really afraid of talking to huge crowds, I've done that before. But public speaking is more than just talking. Like there's a huge, huge, huge difference between talking and really communicating. And listening is a part of that. I am a very bad listener, I tend to zone out a lot. But it is a skill, meaning anybody can build a skill. You don't have to be necessarily be born with a skill. So I just said one thing to myself, by joining Toastmasters, I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. And that is why I am standing here in front of you people today, delivering my first ever speech as a Toastmaster. Thank you so much.
thank you Toastmaster Supriva for that amazing ice breaker. You did not leave a chance to move my, my attention was stuck to you. So this is one of the most amazing ice breakers I have ever heard. Okay, after that amazing speech, let's move forward to phase two. The table topic session. The table topic master who is a new add-on to the club, has surprised us with her versatile talents. She is currently working in HRD at InfoCan. She holds a diploma in counseling and likes to read fiction. Please help me introduce the table topic master, Toastmaster Jyoti. Thank you Toastmaster of the day, uh, Toastmaster Vaishnavi for that wonderful introduction. So, uh, table topics session is a session where we strengthen our thinking, organizing and speaking skills. A random topic will be given to the person, to the speaker, to speak for at least two minutes and at the most also two minutes. It will be an impromptu speech. I urge each speaker to be behind the lectern for the complete two minutes. So let's begin this session. As there has been a dearth in the uh, speakers, there will be no dearth in the table topics given to all the speakers sitting here. And to start with, way back during my school days, I remember playing sack race, three-legged race, potato, picking a potato race. How many of you remember playing any such games? Or maybe my first topic is a memorable, unique game that you played in your school. It could be any one memorable. I have a disclaimer that we shall not speak about cricket and any other sports that we can speak about. So a uh, memorable, unique game you played in school. This one goes to Toastmaster Palmni. Just like that, try it as it is. 
And every time I started cycling, I would lean towards one side. <laughs> every time he tried to help me, this is what I was doing. Then one fine day, I wondered why I was not able to balance it without external support. Why am I not able to balance it myself? He had a hero ranger, boy cycle, with the bar like this, right? So once what happened, we had gone to my grandma's pl place and he uh, always rode the cycle. And I just wanted to try it. What will happen? Let me try without support. He has been trying to teach me since such a long time. And I tried. The kind of victory was really uh, memorable because first and foremost, I learned to not rely on external support. And secondly, I learned to ride a boy cycle. How many of them can do it, right? So in the end, I felt very happy and uh, I thanked my brother. See, I, at, la at last I got it. I got the knack of riding the cycle and not to a boy cycle. And I was feeling so happy. That happiness lasted for a few days because my elder brother graduated from a cycle to a two-wheeler and I received that Hero Ranger cycle with the bar bend to convert it into a ladies cycle. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster Sushma. I do so much relate with you with cycling because all through my school, college days, the only one thing that was precious to me was cycle. And cycle. So we all have our favorite sports. We like to watch or play our favorite sport. The next topic is a game you would never want to play. And why? A game or a sport you would never want to play and why goes to Toastmaster Shiv Prasad. Thank you, Table Topic Master. Uh, very good evening to my fellow Toastmasters. A uh, game or a sport that I would never want to play would be anything to do with water, aquatics, swimming, water polo or anything related to that. Because I have a massive fear of depths, uh, so to speak. I remember uh, I like I had no idea how to swim, and back in my school days, I think it was in fifth standard, they used to take us to Baswanguri swimming uh, pool, and I I and I was so scared of swimming, I would not even enter the pool. Then that guy would push me, and after a few weeks, I somehow uh, faked a doctor's uh, report, gave it to my PE, PE teacher. And then from, from then I escaped going to the swimming pool. Like imagine jumping into 16 feet uh, deep pools and trying to learn how to swim. That That is just, I think that is uh, something that has scared me always. Um, yeah, that's it. Back to you, David. Thank you, Toastmaster Shri Prasad. Yes, some people have the fear of water or fear of height. Some people overcome, some people do not want to. It's individual's choice. But I less grew up listening to Jo Khelega Wo Badega. Those who play will grow. So my next topic is your view on those who play will grow. Goes to Toastmaster Sai Snail. Table topic master, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Usually when I'm not taking any role, I sit in the last because I know I'm bound to get a topic and I can take some time thinking by watching it out. Those who play, they grow. During 8th standard or 7th standard, I was selected as uh, one of the team players for football. And the coach was not really that confident because I was honestly not putting so much effort into football so much. It was something like an hobby or something that I really enjoyed playing. He never saw in that I could really be a defender or a striker or anything that I was trying for because cycling was really the thing I wanted to do and football was just because my friends were there. Luckily one day he gave me an opportunity. He's like, 
the main player who was supposed to play for the tournament next week is not coming. Can you take it up on his behalf? And I had only one week's time to prepare. So for that one week, I played as much as I could. He told me one thing that my ball holding time is very minimal. And he told me, let's just have a small activity every day just for you for 15 minutes at the end of the practice. It was basically a huge circle with around 10 kids in it. And I had to hold the ball without letting them get to it for 10 to 15 minutes every day. Initially, I should lose it off in 10-15 seconds. I was very embarrassed because kids who were 3-4 years younger to me were taking the ball and I, who was supposed to play a match next week, couldn't hold the ball from a kid. So I kept playing, playing. I went back home, I started doing the same thing. I watched videos on how you can control the ball better. Then again, I went back the next day. I was improving myself every single time. And the day before the match, I had lost the strength or the patience to hold on to it because it seemed very difficult. But that practice which I did for a whole week did really help me. Because the match which I played, we won because I could hold the ball from the striker in the last moment and it was a draw. We needed a draw and we got that draw. If you keep practicing over something over a long period of time, I'm sure anything is possible. Thank you and back. Thank you, Toastmaster Sir Sai's name. Yes, what we practice, practice makes man perfect. Okay, my next topic is like most of us have a fantasy to sp uh, spend a day with our favorite celebrity. And my next topic is name a sports person with whom and how you would spend a day. Name a sports person with whom and how you would spend a day. This topic goes to Toastmaster Shalini. A very good evening to all the fellow Toastmasters and your guests and time to table topic master for that topic. Um, I would want to spend that one day with uh, maybe Virat Kohli or any okay, cricket <laughs> or Dave the particular for that matter. Uh, so I would just ask what he did and I know where he's born, what up and all these things because I follow him a lot. Um, I, I would ask how his cricketing career started and obviously they would have some point where they lost and they came back also. Uh, so how did they even uh, come uh, to that Indian cricket team because there are like crores of people playing, playing cricket. So to come to that cricket team it's very difficult for the 11 players out of crores is very difficult. So I would ask them like how did they come and how did he become a captain and how did he like go to that head and shoulders ad and found Anushka Sharma there and yeah thank you and thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sharanye. I do not have much grace for sports. Otherwise, way back when we were young, uh, when we had gone for a dinner, Ravi Shastri was sitting, Sandeep Patil was sitting just to the opposite table and we hardly bothered about it. The flight where we traveled, we had uh, West Indies player Lloyd, right? He was one of our co traveler which we never bothered. Today, I think if I knew much about cricket, then I would have taken pictures with them. So, uh, my next topic is, earlier there were games like outdoor games and indoor games. There were quite a long list of play games and sports which was outdoor and indoor, but now there is online also. So my question is, is online games to be considered as indoor, outdoor and whichever you choose, why? So is online to be considered as indoor or outdoor and whatever is your answer, why? And the topic goes to Toastmaster Vijay Upendra.
Thank you, Dibble Topic Master. Good evening, Toastmasters. Welcome, guests. Online game. It is indoor as well as outdoor game too. You cannot put a border saying that this is indoor or outdoor. When we are inside at home, it becomes an indoor game. When you are traveling and the driver drives sitting backside, then definitely I, that I can also use that. Outdoor come indoor, that's what I mean by that. If I go to office, I'm a little bored. I use some game there for 10 minutes or 10 minutes. Then it becomes indoor game. It's a combination of uh, indoor and outdoor game as far as the online aspect is concerned. But there are certain advantages as well as disadvantages as far as the online game is concerned. Yes, for a short term, we can definitely concentrate on something and come back to work immediately. Use that as a recreation. That's an advantage. If you get addicted to that, one hour, two hours, we are wasting time there. So it's always better take a call, whether it is to be used as an indoor, outdoor, or combination of both, choices one's own. Thank you and back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Vijay Upendra. I gather online games are more as a recreation than games <coughs> as such. <coughs> the next topic, like anything that we talk about always has two sides. The coin has two sides, advantages and disadvantages. My next question is, does playing game or sports have any disadvantages? Does playing games or sports have any disadvantages? The topic goes to AK uh, AK Prabhakar. Madam, table topic master, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome. Yes. Has sports any disadvantage? Let's put it, there are team games and individual games. There are two basically broad categories. And the sports, and I take it, I take it as outside of the, in the field. I have been an intense sportsman. I, something or other I used to really play. I used to be good at cricket. I ended, started as a batsman, ended as a bowler. But the point is that that little extra skill that has to be developed in order to make a mark in the team or beyond that team, you need extra effort and it takes away a lot of time from your other activities. Let's say studies. The question came was how much time I can balance from this to that side. I did it for quite some time even during engineering days. Then I had to somewhere along draw a line because it was hurting my engineering studies. And at that point of time, my, some of my college mates, best of them could not even penetrate Bangalore University team, which was headed by, at that time by Brijesh Patel, Kirmani, Kirmani as a throws of uh, uh, almost a zonal selection level. And there were a lot of such intense competitions around and the quality cricket. So the question was, what are you prepared to pay? Is there a damage? I remember my father coming in to talk to me because I used to do assignments somewhere at 11.30 in the night. So he walked in one day. Uh, maybe my mother told him. So he caught me at that point of time because uh, I would be alone studying he knew. He said, how much you scored? I said, 37 last match, yes. And previous one, 23. And stop it. What, what is your highest score? He said 70 at that time. At that time, the opponent team was headed by uh, Vijay Krishna, who went on to play South Zone. So I said I scored against him. And that was the highest. And otherwise, how much? He said 20, 25, 23. At that time, I was thinking I was a great batsman. He said, Will you be playing for India? He said, No chance. Then why are you wasting time here? Why don't you refocus on this? That changed my life itself. The question is, right time, you should know where, how much talent you have in what area. Everybody thinks that you are unique, you have talent. Question is, what is the level that you can reach with that? Can you jump to the place where you can catch the moon? 
or be with the stars. If not, you can be a lamp at home. Over to Table Topic Master. Thank you, Didi and A.K. Prabhakar. I think that was very well said. Like, you can be with the moon and the stars or be with the lamp at home. I think lamp at home is the best thing. So there is this one boy, Jack, who was told only work and no pay makes a Jack dumb boy. I would want the speaker to say your advice to Jack to overcome his dullness. Your advice to Jack to overcome his dullness by um, the topic goes to Toastmaster Lakshmi. Can you please get the first sentence again? The sentence was uh, only work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So what would be your advice for the dull boy? Thank you, Table Topics Master, for that topic. Um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. We have heard this sentence all the time growing up as kids, as we were growing up. And this is why our parents used to push us out in the evening and said, don't come home for a couple of hours, stay out in the streets, do whatever you want. Uh, if Jack is going to be only studying all the time, and he's not going to be very happy, first of all, uh, unless he's, you know, Stephen Hawking's, and then all he wants to do is only that. But I would suggest that uh, any physical activity is known to release the right, the right kind of hormones in your body. The hormones that kind of keep your mind at an elevated level, it keeps you energetic, it uh, makes you happy, it makes you more interactive, it makes you want to participate. So I would say that a physical activity would only help Jack to be better at what he wants to be, even if he is, it is academics related, if the more he realizes that uh, any physical activity that he can take on will contribute more and more to him excelling at what he wants to do, uh, whatever academic activity or maybe whatever studies or whatever research uh, oriented activity that he wants to do. So I would say definitely this is the advice that I would give Jack is to inculcate whatever physical activity that he would like to do in his regular routine. Thank you and thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Lakshmi. Yes, physically if we are playing and running around, much more can be done. A very important quality for any player is and must should have is sportsmanship. So my question is, is sportsmanship restricted to only sports people? Is sportsmanship restricted to only sports people? The topic goes to Toastmaster Veerabhadrapa. Good evening to all the Toastmasters here. Tell me, my dear friends, where you need, where you need not have to have a sportsmanship. It is nothing but a, you need to have a determination, conviction that I can do it. The other word given for this, all these things is nothing but a sportsmanship. When you encounter a problem, you should not get away from there. You must have a, you must have a sportsmanship to overcome that one, address that one and uh, think in a positive way. That is most important in our life. My dear friends, I have seen all of you here by coming to the Toastmaster, the way you speak, the way you enjoyed your childhood. I feel I never had that type of a sportsmanship when I was a boy, when I came up. I feel always I was thinking how these people speak and other things because we, we never exposed to such type, such type of things compared to my two children who are abroad and other things, they are doing very fine. So that type of a thing was not there. In spite of that, I had a sportsmanship. To come up in my life, to do something different, that was that, that made me to uh, go in a better way and uh, reach to the heights what I think uh, I have done to the maximum. I, have, I myself feel happy because of the achievements I have, uh, I have achieved in my lifetime. Always I tell my friends, 
be a sportsmanship have a courage have a conviction don't take your leg back be honest you that is most thing is required don't try to uh, have a sportsmanship in a thing which is not required which harms another another person that you should not do it to only so if you have that type of a thing the success is yours when you have failed it is not that one uh, you are something you might have uh, this thing failed for the uh, that one have a sportsmanship to uh, have a sportsmanship to take up the thing once again and come out with the laurels to give say an example i put my second daughter to the nttf on the day of exam she called me i will not go to the exam are papa you must have a sportsmanship go and exam right there what shall i do i don't know anything how can i sit two hours there okay papa what has happened up and come let us go to the hotel and eat food and come back <laughs> so i encouraged her i put her a sportsmanship he said will you put back to the same thing okay it cost one lakh rupees nothing to worry god has given money i will put for that one believe me my friends with that sportsmanship she came first for the class from that day onwards only nobody can stop her to reach the pinnacle my dear friends have a that type of a guts in you i my language is different when i speak to my employees you must have a steel nerves to achieve that one have a sportsmanship have a courage be honest and be sincere and be with god thank you very much thank you toastmaster devadappa yes sportsmanship has to be fair and square in whatever we do and with that i give the charge back to toastmaster vaishnavi Master Toastmaster Jyoti for that wonderful table topic session. We heard stories about the spirit of sportsmanship and the stories of their lives growing up. Uh, let's take a ten minutes networking break now. Okay. Uh, we'll assemble back at eight. Welcome back, everyone. After listening to the amazing speech and the yummy snacks, it's time to introspect and correct some wrongs and praise some rights. The general evaluator for today knows his rights and wrongs well. He had a passion to become a doctor, but couldn't pursue it. With the drive to learn and pursue a new goal. of entering mba in an ivy league and learning to learn how to fight his mind a mechanical engineer works as new product specialist loves playing football and a vegetarian foodie please help me introduce the general evaluator for today i'll just come up so so sorry don't don't that's those must simply dumb away the biasa you can write it down once it okay i don't get a name i can get it gatis get a round of applause right thank you so much this master vaishnavi um lose it is learning she lost my name right now she learned the name for good she's never going to forget my name that's how we learn from whatever we do or whatever we don't do right i'll quickly jump into the general evaluation session the business session started slightly or pretty much delayed but the rain's causing havoc outside so let's not blame anyone other than the rain gods and just keep it limited there uh there was just one topic that the vp had spoke about that's the role takers for the next meeting very smooth straight forward Uh, nothing much would dwell on there, and we quickly moved on to the sergeant's address. Toastmaster Shiv Prasad. When I look at Toastmaster Shiv Prasad, the one word that comes to me is textbook execution. You don't miss a point. If it's there in the book, it's there in your speech, or it's there in your role. Whether it's putting things in place, announcing what you have to, the phones, the theme, your take on the theme, you pepper it with humor. You have a very nice introduction to the president, so you have everything in place. You have the energy as well to do it. So when all this is combined, we get a great start to a meeting, and that's what we usually want. So a job very well done there. Now, what can you work on to take this to the next level? Now that you're good at these things, 
Why don't you start experimenting? You have a standard habit, just an example, you have a standard habit of coming and saying, before I start, put your phones on silent. Try to dwell that into the theme. Let's not lose somebody's speech here with your phones ringing. Put it on silent. It's not a great change, it's a very subtle change, but it gets you thinking on those lines. So that is what you can, you can try doing. Just one thing for today, you missed the word of the day on the board. You have quite some time to write it today because people tend to lose it. It's announced once by the grammarian, but it's always nice to see it so that when I'm talking, I can look at it and say, oh, today's word of the day is dirt. I can use it somewhere, right? So just try to use that. But other than that job, that beautiful job, I always like your sergeant. It does a round of applause for those constituents. <laughs> he used the acting presiding officer for the evening, or the acting president, the man who fell from his bike and his club fell to the 10th position on Premier League table. The Liverpool fan, Toastmaster Gaurav, I take a special pride in mentioning Liverpool went down, right? Uh, Toastmaster Gaurav, you are a very good speaker. You have a nice story, the story of cricket, who wouldn't relate to it, right? Every single person out there can relate to it. So very comfortable, very nice story, a relevant one that you picked up for the theme and for the crowd to understand. And you cruised through the session. And I've seen that you've done it multiple times in the past as a uh, acting president and the online sessions, I had seen you more behind the lectern than any other speaker. So you've gotten very comfortable with the lectern space, with the crowd, so you're doing it very well. Now because you've done it so much, I would want to be a little critical about what you can do and take it to the next level. Though your speaking is very comfortable, now it's time for you to start working on your tonalities, right? Your whole story is in one tone, whether you scored a century or whether you got hurt or whether you lost. It's on the same tone. Now how am I going to imbibe emotions in other people if I don't show it on my face? Right? So that is something that you can start doing. Uh, just a good example, try to build a suspense or try to build those, em work those emotions in people. So for example, today when you were giving your speech, you said, the third match after I played the shot, I felt a very strange feeling. I was thinking, is this what Virat feels every time he scores a century? And then I realized that pain, that feeling was a pain in my thigh with the ball being hit in the first match. Something like this, build that such suspense, make them think about it, get the audience more involved. It shouldn't be like you speaking, they listening. Try to get them more involved and sail through you through the entire speech. That is something you can do, right? I Something that I sense, I don't know if it's true, but something that I feel in my opinion is, you are in a kind of a hurry to finish and run back and sit. Don't do that. Take your time. They're going to applaud for you today when you stand here. Soak in that feeling. Feel really good about it. Then go back and sit. Try to do that. But from the execution point of it, op logistics point of it, operation point of it, you've done a tremendous amount of work already as a president, even before being the president. So great job done. A good round of applause to Toastmaster Gordon. With that, we moved on to the first session that was the prepared speech session. We had one speech that was an icebreaker by Toastmaster Suprabha. Can I please have the individual evaluator, Toastmaster Rajwal, present as evaluation? A very happy evening once again, and my target speaker, Toastmaster Suprabha, in particular. Firstly, a hearty congratulations, Toastmaster Suprabha, for completing your icebreaker speech. So, welcome to the Toastmaster's journey. Today, I would like to evaluate the speech based on three aspects: what you excel at, what you can, what what you have to work on, and what you can challenge yourself. Now, to address this speech as an icebreaker speech. It should include three things, that is F, I, P, which means family, interest, and profession. And today, Toastmaster Suprabha, to Toastmaster Suprabha's speech included all the three things, so kudos to you on that effort. And to be frank, for a moment, I was blank because I was thinking whether I'm evaluating her icebreaker speech or some uh, elective projects or level 2 speeches. I am saying this because Toastmaster Suprabha's speech included effective voice modulation, adaptable hand gestures and what not to call it a perfect speech.
Due to her interest in reading books, her vocabulary was excellent. So by observing all these features, we can see how much preparation have been went in practicing her speech. Really a great job done. Moving on, her speech also included the presence of humor, which really attracts her speech and kept the audience attention throughout the end. Coming to the what you can work on is that since the project requires to speak about yourself, I felt the introduction about your schooling and the college part was missing. So if you could have included that part in your rice paper speech, it would have went up to the next level. And other than that, it was a structured and a flawless icebreaker speech. Coming to what you can challenge yourself is that actually it was a big challenge for me itself to evaluate on this aspect. Now what you can challenge yourself is that since you are a natural speaker and was an inborn talent to speak in front of the crowd, if you could use the whole stage by moving towards left and right during your trans transitions in your speech. I think your speech was would have went up to the next level, I would say. Uh, and uh, so that's the thing, what you can challenge yourself. So if you can inculcate these things in your future projects, it will be a really amazing speech, I would say. So all in all, it was an awesome icebreaker speech. So looking forward to have more and more amazing speeches from you. Thank you and back to you, Jeannie. Thank you, Toastmaster Ujwal. As my job as the G, I'm going to evaluate the evaluator. Toastmaster Ujwal, you, I saw the kind of preparation that when you know doing this particular evaluation, you sat out there and I saw a page full of notes that you were writing, which is really good. It shows how seriously somebody has to take your work, whether it's something as a tab G or something as an evaluator as a G. So very good job done on that. Now coming to the execution part of it, you know, you start off really well saying I'm going to use a three by three matrix saying areas of the good part, the areas of improvement and what you can challenge. Though you had the structure, when you when it came to the points, you kind of weaned off, right? So when you, what's, what's easier for the speaker is to have three bullet points. Bullet points, you can get into the details, but bullet points so that it's easy for the speaker to comprehend, right? So three good things that Supraba had today. Great humor, great structure, and she's a natural speaker, right? Areas of improvement, maybe you could have touched upon your schooling. So put it in points like this so it's easy for them to comprehend when they go back. And always summarize. You might have three points, but you always have one point that's very important to you in each of these categories. So try to summarize, saying all in all, today's speech, Supraja, uh, Suprabha, you had very good usage of words, which is your strength that you can work on. You can concentrate on a few topics that say more relevant to this particular speech but, uh, and challenge yourself by using more of the stage. With that, we will be able to see you over the next level. So that one, one point becomes a highlight. So try to do that. But a very good job done, very good effort. A huge round of applause to the speaker and the evaluator. Okay, with that we move on to the table topic session. There was no dearth of topics here, though we initially thought we won't have people, but we had enough uh, topics, enough speakers. So, uh, Toastmaster Jyoti, very interesting set of topics. I would say it was a good because it was more on the sports side, on maybe you covered a range of topics with schooling, with games. So it was more focused on that side, but interesting topics was easy for a few, put a few in a fix, but that's built the blend is nice. It's not always we come here and get an easy topic and we speak. These tough things, these small things, these small losses is what love make, makes us learn, right? So that was beautifully done. Uh, a very good session, sitting there, I thoroughly enjoyed the session. But what you can do to take this to the next level, what you can do better, right? The topics and the preludes to it were very long. It's short and crisp and concise. It's easy for them to understand, right? It's you. I understand your attempt. You wanted to set a context for each topic as to why you're giving this topic and what they can be speaking about. Though it's nice, it becomes a prelude and people tend to get confused as to where exactly the topic is going to start. 
and what is it that I should speak about. So maybe you can cut down on that, just stick to the sentence. You can transition with one line from one topic to another, but keep your to topics to one line, right? And as a table topic master, the thumb rule is never give your opinion on the topic. It's for them to speak. You just come, conclude, go to the next topic. So that is how you should be running the next time, right? But all in all, good session. Everyone had a thorough laugh. Everyone enjoyed the session. A huge round of applause to those master Joe. With that, I'll quickly move on to the role takers. I, before that, I think we can quickly vote on the ballots for the best table topic speaker. Just give you 10 seconds for that because it's just, oh, I think, the role takers as well. Speaker, the best two role takers, right? Tab G and MTG. Okay, we'll quickly move on to the reports. Up first, because it's easy, let me call upon the parliamentary procedures evaluator, Postmaster Shiva. Thank you, General Evaluator. Uh, as my role is as my role as a parliamentary procedure evaluator, I noticed uh, there were there was one entry by a guest during uh, speech, and I think it was the board today. It was falling off, not helping us in any way. Apart from that, a uh, little bit of crosstalks when the speaker was speaking. We can avoid that from the next meeting. And uh, there were no phone ringings, and the meeting went on smoothly. Nothing about sex, religion, or politics. That's it. I'm back to you. With that, the timer, the wise baboon, Toastmaster Lakshmi. <laughs> All right. Thank you, General Evaluator. The baboon is here with the timings that people took, so let's uh, see. The business session went on for 2 minutes and 10 seconds. I'm sorry, I should mention that we commenced a little late, 6.42 p.m. So, but I guess it was because of the rain, so that's all right. The welcome addressed by the Sergeant of Arms at uh, was 2 minutes 48 seconds. The acting president was uh, <coughs> Toastmaster Gaurav today. Presidential address took 6 minutes 40 seconds. The introduction of Toastmaster of the evening was about 30 seconds. The report of the previous meeting by Toastmaster Shiv Prasad was 1 minute 56 seconds. The, there was one prepared speech today by Toastmaster Suprabha. She took 6 minutes 24 seconds. The table topics, individual table topic speakers are listed on the board. The entire table topic session took around 16 minutes. There were 9 table to nine topics and 9 speakers. The break was about 11 minutes and 15 seconds. The MC has taken till now about 10 minutes. The, there was one individual evaluate, evaluation today by Toastmaster Ujwal and uh, he took uh, 3 minutes 28 seconds. The general evaluator till now has taken 6 and a half minutes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Speaking of action, that's Sergeant at Arms. Uh, with that, we move on to the next role taker, the R counter, Toastmaster Power. Words so three times and R ah one time. Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Vaishnavi, two hours. Grammarian Toastmaster Sharani Prasad, one hour. Speaker one, now Toastmaster Suprabha, flawless. Evaluator, uh, Toastmaster Rujwal, flawless. Table topic master, Toastmaster Jyotira, uh, three hours. Toastmaster Sharani, three hours. Toastmaster Vijay Upendra, flawless. DTM AK Prabhakara, flawless. Toastmaster Lakshmi, two hours. Toastmaster Viravadrapa, two hours. Toastmaster Supreet, one hour. And crutch word, right, few times. Thank you and back to you, Jenny.
And finally, the Grammarian was Master Sharani. Once again, good evening everyone. Uh, Toastmasters and the guests did not fail to use good grammar which made the whole session cognizant and sensible. So I'll start off with the good usages. Dishearted, delegate, miserable, active listening. There is a place beyond right and wrong. Meet me there. Abandon, penetrate, intense competition, quality cricket, elevated level, inculcate, fair and square, textbook evaluation. <laughs> uh, standard habit, dwell, subtle and invite. Coming to the not so good usages, fully disappointed can have been, uh, could have been um, completely disappointed, never have that kind of childhood could have been, I have never had that kind of childhood. I will put for that could have been, I will join you back. Uh, done it so much could have been, done it so many times. Uh, the word of the day was dearth and it was used by Toastmaster Lakshmi, Toastmaster Jyoti and Toastmaster Sukti. Thank you and back to you. Master Shania. Can we have a round of applause for all the uh, role takers, please? <laughs> with that, we'll quickly move on to the master of ceremonies for the evening, Toastmaster Vaishnavi. So I'll put an evaluation in three simple parts. You win, you learn, you have fun, right? So where you won, you had a good story, you set the stage really well for the session, you had a nice theme for us to all introspect those questions, made me think back, go back and think as to what is the one thing that I was really passionate about. So you had a very nice state set, good preparation on the back end, very nice job done. Through the meeting, the transition between the sessions were very nice, you kept it smooth and running, easy going meeting. That's what we really like, it's, it's a relaxed Monday evening for all of us. So that was very well done. On the introduction side, good, you've taken, you've collected info, you've done your background work, and you executed the introductions here as well. So the job very well done on that. But what you can learn a little bit, uh, is this your one of the first few times you're doing your MC? First time, nice. So it, it, that's what I wanted to know. There are a lot of instances where you were trying to read out of the book, right? Uh, not about people's introductions, not about their speeches, but your initial story when you started off your first few lines. Try to get the first few lines into your head. That is when you make maximum impact, maximum contact with the audience, right? So the first few lines, if you look at everybody in the eye and start your meeting, and nobody is going to dare look away from you when you're at the lecture. Try to build that command. That is what you can start doing as an MC. That is what you can learn. Uh, other than that, a simple guideline, a thumb rule when you introduce a speaker, it's their introduction. Today there was no introduction though. The title and then the speaker's name. Introduction, title, and speaker's name. I'll tell you why. The moment you take the speaker's name, we Toastmasters are addicted to clapping. We start applauding as soon as we hear a person's name. Right? So in that, today's you, somewhere, because it was a longer title as well, that can get lost. With her speech titled, right, Grow Through What I Go Through, please welcome Toastmaster Suprabha. Right, the name comes in the end. Then they start applauding. That's how you build the present. So that is something that you can take away from today's. But you had complete fun. There were small snippets. It was, like I said, an enjoyable session for us sitting, I, 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 sitting there. And I'm sure you had a lovely time being here back at the lecture. So for your first time, I'm sure it was fun. Beautiful session, a huge round of applause to the MC. <laughs> Couple of things before I leave, leave the stage. First thing, I'm really happy to see an offline meeting. Uh, kudos to, I really want to say great credit to the guys who put their efforts to run a smooth online offline hybrid meetings with all the uh, constraints and restraints we had. But it's really nice to see an offline meeting, none of those uh, fundas. It's really good. Uh, something that I heard in the secretary's report was last speech, last week's meeting, there were three speech slots that were booked and all the other roles were open. But today we saw just one speech, right? So ensure that there are no dropouts. Today's I know one was rain, but there, is, there might be another story behind it. Uh, so get to the bottom of it, ask speakers if their speeches have been mentored. So get to that and ensure you don't, you try not to 
lose out on speakers or bring in back. I know the VPN job is really tough, but I think that is something we can do. Uh, the other thing is, I want people to go back and look at our club website sometime so that you know who is who. You don't miss a name sometime there. But it's nice to put a face, put a name to the face, you would have seen us, or put a name to the face, you have seen us, you know the names, you go there, you coordinate one and one, and you know who is who when you come to the club sometime. I know we've been in a very hybrid meeting till now, but now that we're offline, make use of it, see that there, come here, use the base camp, provide feedback whenever you can, or as much as you can. Small thing is, can we get those tits back here, so that we can give offline feedback here as well. So that is something that we can do, right? So let's try to do that. I know we lose a few, we win some. Let's try to learn that, uh, those few things. Before I wrap up, a quick thing that I wanted to tell, something that I uh, lost and I learned from it. Uh, just a quick thing. I think it was 2009 when uh, I wanted to go visit my grandma. This was in one of my speeches well, for whom you heard it. I wanted to go visit my grandma in the evening. Uh, I was playing uh, football, so I, quit, so I postponed the visit by one day. I go, go, to, go to meet her at 5 in the evening, next morning we lost her. Uh, that kind of was with me for a very long time. Uh, three months back I was in Taiwan. Uh, Saturday night my mom called up and said your granddad is not feeling well. Sunday night I booked the first flight possible and I came back. But I still couldn't meet him. Even before I could board my flight in Taiwan he was no more. But something that stays with me is I made my effort. The first time I didn't put in my efforts, the second time I did my efforts. So I learned something. I lost him, I lost her, but I learned something in the process. So try not to learn the hard way. Take the easy ones there, the low hanging fruits. Try to learn that there. That's what we come here for, right? We always don't get a ribbon. Sometimes we lose a ribbon. But when you lose a ribbon, you learn to win it the next time. On that note, thank you and back to the news.
the best table of its speaker for today goes to DTM Naked Rubber. Well, we had only one speaker and one evaluator, but let's appreciate for them to coming in this rain and giving the speech and the evaluation. The best speaker goes to Toastmaster Suprabha. And the best evaluator is Toastmaster Uju. everyone for coming today uh, and before I end I request everyone to go through base camp feedback and please give your valuable feedback. I know we are going to start with the physical form but trust me technical is also important because after I, once I become 30 years old if I want to see my old uh, evaluations and feedback then that is the, I mean, base camp is the only platform I have. So I request everyone to use that opportunity, use that valuable feedback I will give them. So yeah, uh, I, I close meeting number 118 and uh, request everyone. <laughs>